Hi, welcome back. Today in our IoT series, we're picking up with a project we've been working on, which is a solar powered, battery backed temperature sensor. This sends its data into Home Assistant and it uses an add-on called ESP Home. This doubles as a firmware and also as an API broker into Home Assistant. It's pretty powerful. Now in our last episode, we went ahead and got those things configured. If you're not up to this point, I recommend you go back and watch those videos, get your Home Assistant ready, get your ESP Home plugin set up, and you'll be caught up and you'll be ready to go. Also, if you haven't quite yet built... What the hell is that thing? One second. Yeah. Also, in an earlier series, we built this IoT sensor. This is solar powered. It uses a standard 18650 battery. Running on solar, it drives a ESP32 and has a nice environmental sensor. It can do temperature sensing, humidity, barometric pressure, and it can even send its own battery voltage back to Home Assistant. So go back and find that IoT video. I'm gonna link to that above just in case you're having trouble finding it. I'd love to see you build this and then pick up with us here. We're gonna get it configured. So in Home Assistant, head over to the ESP Home add-on should be on your left bar if you followed along before. And we're gonna add our first device. So hit the plus symbol down here. And let's step through this wizard. And hit begin, give it a name. One thing to note on the names here is it needs to be lowercase. This might drive you crazy. It'll let you step through the whole wizard. You'll get to the point where you need to compile it and it won't compile and you can't figure out why. It has to be lowercase, okay? Hot tip there. Hit next. And if you're following along in this series, I'm using the Wemos D1 Mini ESP32. Link to that down in the description. They're pretty inexpensive. It's an ESP32, it's super powerful. Otherwise, select your board, hit next. Give it your Wi-Fi information and an OTA password. This is just for the initial setup into Home Assistant. It gives it a little security when you're first adding that device into Home Assistant. Hit next and hit submit. And we'll see we have our first node, okay. Now we need to flash this onto our ESP32 over USB the first time. You can't do over the air updates yet. It's not on the network. So this is a one-time setup. Hit the three dot menu on the far right and click compile. And it's gonna run through and compile this firmware in real time. So a quick note while it's doing that, if you're familiar with ESP Easy and other firmwares like that, they tend to be pretty big because you have all of the plugins for that firmware loaded on your chip. But what we're doing here is it's going to compile this firmware in real time when you make changes to it. The first time it's gonna take a little longer, but once it's done, you have a fairly lightweight bin file compared to other types of firmwares. Okay, and once it's done, you'll get this success. So click on the download binary button, and this is gonna download the .bin file straight to your local machine. So next we need to get our ESP32 plugged into USB, and I'm on Mac OS, so I'm going to use a command to see where that landed on my USB bus. LS dev tty.usb star will tell us every USB serial device that shows up. And this one shows up, great. I'm gonna copy just the numeric end to that because I know that's the only difference. And I'm gonna get over into my downloads folder where that bin file is. And see if I can find it, there it is, esp-omg.bin, okay. So next I need to flash it. So just provide the correct serial port here to this command and the bin file. I've got links to all these commands on my website in case you're scrambling to catch these. Just click on that link below. Now what this is gonna do, it's gonna go ahead and connect to the ESP32 and write that flash in. Awesome. Give that just in a minute to flash. And there we go, it's flashed. Great, let's head back over to Home Assistant. If your IoT devices are on the same network as your Home Assistant server and your ESP Home, generally you're not gonna have any trouble. You'll come in here and this should be green after you've booted up your ESP for the first time. Now, if they're on different networks, there's really just a couple of things that can go wrong there that you're gonna need to adjust. First of all, let me hit this one first because this is a little harder to find. Head over to your firewall. If you're using PFSense, this is going to be easy for you. If you're using something else, you're gonna to have to read between the lines to figure this part out for your particular environment. First thing you wanna do, go to general setup, make a note of what your domain is set. So this is gonna be what all of your devices, when they come in, 
are gonna be the FQDM. Secondly, head over to your DNS server. You're gonna to need to enable the option here to register DHCP leases in the DNS resolver. A lot of times we turn that off, and if you followed my PFSense series, I recommend you turn that off at a default. However, where you've got IoT devices coming and going and they're using DHCP, their FQDN, their fully qualified name, needs to be registered in DNS in order for services to find them because they're looking for them by name and save and apply that setting. Next, and again, if you're on different network segments, if your IoT devices are on a different network segment, say in a VLAN, than your home assistant server, you're gonna to need to enable a service so that they can auto discover. These devices tend to use something called MDNS, which is kind of an auto discovery broadcast service, and it doesn't work well out of the box across VLANs. So we need to add a package. Go to System, Package Manager, and under Available Packages, you're gonna be looking for a package called Avahi. I already have it installed here. Go ahead and install this, and once it's installed, Go to services, go to Avahi, and under the interface section, you're gonna to wanna to select at least the two networks where your home assistant server lives and your IoT devices are connecting via Wi-Fi. Select those networks and also check this box to repeat MDNS packets across subnets. That's gonna help those packets get across there because normally that broadcast is not going to span VLANs. So that might help you right out of the box alone. Secondly, if you do that and you're still not connecting, it still can't find it, you might need to make a modification to your ESP firmware. And that would be if you come in under the Wi-Fi section, edit that config file that we created earlier, and you're gonna to wanna to add a couple options here. One of these is optional. So the first one will be to give it the domain. So when it goes in, it knows that this is the domain that it's looking for, okay? And then secondarily, this fast connect option, this is, if, if you're using a separate Wi-Fi network just for IoT devices, and if you have the broadcast SSID hidden, which I kind of like to do, I don't really want the SSID of that Wi-Fi network being broadcast around, you need to use Fast Connect. This will make sure that it can find a Wi-Fi network that is not broadcasting its SSID. And then we need to recompile this again because we still haven't gotten a successful connection. So again, hit that three dot menu, compile, let it run through the compiler. And when it's done, download binary, and then you'll just want to flash that over one more time. Once that's done flashing, let us go back to Home Assistant and eventually it'll come online and it'll turn green. You can hit the logs button and this will show you all of the API data. So you'll see its signal strength and its IP address and host name and all that kind of stuff. And if we have some sensors connected to us, it would show you that sensor data. So we're off and running. This is looking pretty good. I hope you enjoyed this video. Today we made some good progress with getting some firmware installed on our IoT device got that connected into ESP Home. In our next video, we're gonna wire that into Home Assistant so that we can get some sensor data on a dashboard, do something useful with it, maybe set up a couple of alerts, things like that. So if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, hit that notification bell so you see the next one coming in, and I will see you next time. Thank you.